name is Heather and I'm starting a new channel. This is it. Um, about children's picture books that I love to read with my 19 month old twin boys. As you can see, they've taken over my whole house. Although it was pretty messy before that, so I can't blame them for too much. We read a whole variety of books, but what I really wanted to talk about here are books that I think are really uh, awesome at teaching progressive values in whatever political climate we're in, um, whatever is going on in the news that we're listening to and seeing and reading as parents. No matter how young our kids are, I think we can start having really important conversations with them about the kind of citizens and people and humans we want them to be. People and humans are the same thing. Three books. <laughs> Of course, a lot of these books are going to feature animals and not people, <laughs> but uh, my kids are too little to understand some of these concepts, and then I figure that some of these conversations will come a little bit later. The first book that I want to start talking about is It's an Orange Aardvark by Michael Hall. So as you can see from the cover, the reason that my kids love this book already is because of the bright, bold colors and Sir's graphic pictures. Um, the author was a graphic designer for many years and sort of later became a children's author and he has said that he likes to kind of create simple stories with simple pictures that can teach or you know talk about important stuff uh, and i think he does a really good job with this book if you read reviews of this book online lots of people talk about the fact that it can teach your kids colors which again it's all about colors it's great um but it also is about the scientific method and that's not just me saying it the author said that so it's real there are five characters in this book. This guy in the yellow helmet, he's the scientist. They're all carpenter ants. The guy in the orange helmet, he's the fear mongerer. Guy, three guys in blue helmets are, um, they're all impressionable ants. They don't really know what's going on. They get scared when the fear monger is going, but they get excited when the scientist is talking. And so they sort of go back and forth and the scientist is kind of trying to convince them of what's happening. So what is happening? We, the reader, know from the get-go that there is a big storm. It's thundering and it's raining and the ants are in a tree stump, so they don't know what's going on. And that's what the question is. What do we hear going on outside? Whirr is how it starts. And that's kind of one of the big noises. There are lots of fun noises in this book. And the scientist ant starts drilling holes to figure out what is going on. This guy in the orange helmet, or little fearful ant, does not want any holes to be drilled because he's convinced, without any reasoning, he's convinced that there is a big aardvark lurking outside of the tree stump waiting to eat them all. That's an aardvark. And okay, I get it. That would be scary. Aardvarks legitimately do eat ants, and I'm sure they, if they scurried out of their stump and they saw an aardvark waiting there, they'd be terrified. And if they got eaten up, that'd be bad. So, okay, reasonable fear but also reasonable to maybe drill some holes and figure out if there really is an aardvark out there. And the first thing they see is the bright orange color. Whew. You would think. Mm -mm. This guy has decided the aardvark is orange because they turn orange when they're hungry. Now, I'm not sure where he's getting his information, but the scientist Dan is not convinced. He's never heard about this happening before. So he just wants to drill more holes and gather more clues. And this is where the fun part with colors comes in because blue pops up and, you know, <clears throat> it's not just blue, but it's blue like the ocean. And then, you know, we get the fearful guy telling us that the aardvark is now wearing blue pajamas because ants taste super good before bedtime. And then we have more colors and there's red and it's red like a fire truck and it's yellow like the sun and green like grass. And so there are all these comparisons and great ways for talking about colors. But as we keep seeing, you know, the red and the green and the yellow, instead of becoming more and more relieved, the ant in the orange helmet becomes more and more scared and more and more wild in his hypotheses. And it's still an aardvark and he's got, you know, a gang of green geckos with him and they're driving a bulldozer and they're, you know, all coming to the stump to eat all of the ants. And he's more and more and more convinced, even though the evidence starts to suggest that more and more that something else is going on. As our scientist ant in the yellow helmet is gathering more clues, he starts to realize that all of these colors are meaningful in some way. You do see them somewhere together. And he suspects that there might be purple, and 
and there is. And so he convinces the guys in the blue helmets that it's okay to leave the stump and to go check out what's going on. And of course they see a rainbow. All four of them are there and they see the rainbow and they're excited and it's beautiful and they're hanging out. And then the scientist ant goes back down into the stump to let the kind of scaredy ant know that it's okay, coast is clear. Come on out, dude. Now, I'll admit the ending is somewhat ambiguous, except not really. My husband totally did not get the end. He read it to our kids and he's like, oh my God, there's really an aardvark out there. He's pouring purple grape juice. It's not true. There's no aardvark. It's a good uh, opportunity to have a conversation. So I'm just gonna show you the last page and spoil it for you. Here is our fear-mongering ant and everyone else has gone outside of the stump and the scientist is trying to kind of pull him outside too. And he says, no, no, grape juice, because the last color that they saw when they drilled a hole was purple. He says, grape juice tastes good with ants too, you know? And the scientist is like, ah, and he gets really frustrated. It ends on sort of the fear of the orange helmeted ant in the stump because he never went out to see what's actually out there. And the frustration of this scientist who has given him evidence and went out and confirmed his hypothesis that there's a rainbow and he knows what's going on and he still can't convince this guy. Feels pretty topical, not gonna lie. But I think the ending for little kids would be really confusing and so it would be worth discussing with them. It gives you this chance to talk about why, you know, you shouldn't sort of let yourself be controlled by fear. And if you think something is scary, you know, you might have a reason for starting out to feel that way, but if you start to gather more facts and evidence and learn about something, either it can become less scary or it can become something completely different than you thought it was to begin with. And so I just think this is a fun and silly and colorful book, but also a book that gives you opportunities to start having bigger conversations. And that's why I like it. My husband, I talked to him and he now agrees with me too, because I'm right. <laughs> so I have a long list of other books that I love to share with you in the future. You probably just being my mom. Hi mom. But if other people are out there and also want to um, know more about some of the books that I have that are teaching progressive values, please subscribe below. And if you have any other books to suggest, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you.